Hey Wanderers, and welcome back to Outlaws Wanted. Last time, the crew of the Honor and the map that could lead back to their hidden base were captured by the Interstellar Council. But not all is as it would seem, as a chaos-tainted robot seems to be spying on their captor as well as them. The four of you are sitting in a cell that's just kind of an open room, you know, with benches along the side and a glowing purplish force field keeping you inside. What's everybody about? So, uh, be honest, was the Interstellar Council always this fascist, or is that just a new thing? Uh, well, don't look at me, I'm, I've never been real into politics or anything like that. What, what would my what would my experience from the Galactic Alliance tell me about? Totally up to your discretion. They were extremely... F- no. <laughs> your silence speaks volumes. <laughs> no. <laughs> Celtic will remember this. <laughs> in my experience from my time in the Galactic Alliance, they seem to be relatively peaceful, democratic, like I don't remember any trouble with them. Well, chaos has changed things for everyone, I guess. Though, I feel like chaos, as I said, you might have picked up on, I had a lot of soul-searching journey, and I don't feel like chaos is an accurate term, since apparently there are two factions left, essentially, in the galaxy. That seems less turbulent, not more. But maybe I'm just nitpicking. That being said, we definitely need to fight this entity and get rid of it. But I'm just saying, I think it prides itself on being chaotic when it just makes things orderly. The weird flex is all I'm saying. Vi uh, is kind of off in her own little world. Uh, she's like pacing back and forth. Do I still have my uh, communicator? Or would they have taken uh, like everything? What What do we have? I would have assumed that they would take in everything, okay. but what would you want so to- So we're naked. But what would you want to do with a communicator, out of curiosity? The only thing I could think of is um, somehow tweak it so it could- so. See, I know, I think communicators are generally short range, so like I said, I, I'm. this is the only thing I can think of. I totally get if this wouldn't even work. But try to, like, tweak it so that she could let Camilla know something's up, even if it's just, like, putting out her coordinates. So it's like, hey, we are here and we are not moving or, like, that kind of a thing. Yeah. Okay. I'm totally fine if they've taken that. Like I said, that's the I only would thing. I say they have taken it, but that does not make it a not good goal. Does that make sense? Like, it's yeah. something to be aware of. Like, we want to try to do this. Yeah. Good, good things to try to d- get done. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Cause I think, uh, if, if she doesn't have anything physical to do, like with her hands, she's just kind of like pacing back and forth, trying to like think through what the next step is going to be. Sure. Can I do like an investigation check? On, like, the security of this cell. <laughs> yes. Are there specific questions you want to ask before you roll? If the answer is no, that's okay. I think it would be how much are we being surveilled? If there's any... T- oh, I have, like, a skill about find a weak point, don't I? You do have that. I sh- yeah. sure think I you do. do. I think these are two roles, though. If you want to talk about surveillance, that can be its own investigation check, and then we can kind of roll from there. Okay, yeah, so I'll see. I'll say I'll do one on, like, technical surveillance and, like, personnel, like, who, who, is there, are there, like, guards outside as well, or is it just, like, a camera or nothing? Sure. Okay. Sure. Solid questions. Okay, roll, roll me that. So uh, that'll be smart, probably? Yes. That is a 13. I know everything. Okay, so investigation check in this room about investigation, or about surveillance. It's a very clean, like, totally smooth white room, but in the center there's a slightly off-colored panel, and kind of from looking at it, you can almost vaguely see a movable camera, so it they're clearly watching you while you're in here. Okay. 
The walls are all very sleek, and when you get right up to the force shield that's keeping you in here, you can't really look back and forth down the hallway very far, but you've seen different people walking back and forth, so it seems to be patrolled. Okay. Like they're patrolling the hallway? Yes, yeah, so some people are walking past, I would say, once every ten minutes. Okay. Can I reach out into the cognitive realm? You may. What do you want to do? I want to see where I can see chaos in this ship. Oh, okay. So it's not, I'm not, well, I mean, if something's next to me, I'm going to kill it, but it's not like I'm trying to, like, take on the entire ship at once kind of thing. Gotcha. Okay. I drop into the cognitive realm. What do I see? Um, okay. You drop into the cognitive realm, and it is... This is the first time you've dropped in the Cognitive Realm, right? Since you've been back? No. I dropped in there with Lucy, or not, or Salvador. Oh, okay, okay. That is fine. It's different this time. Maybe something I should have established last time, but you were kind of in a moment, not like just looking around for funsies. When you look around this time, you... So your initial thing was to try to find chaos, right? Yes. Well, that's very obvious when you drop in. So you can see it would just be one, uh, like eyeball surrounded by like an eyelid. It's just basically like a floating lidded eyeball. And you can see a tendril connected to it that just flies off into eternity. So you can't see where that goes. And that is it. But when you drop in this time, you can also see other figures kind of like glowing white goldenish shadows moving around um including four right next to you so you're vaguely aware of other people as well not just chaos interesting is there anything else you want to learn i would say if you have more questions that'll be rules can i try to pull someone in with me like can i go up to their figure and see if i can pull them in are you trying to do that to one of the four people, like, around you? Yes. Uh, yes, you well, can. The four do. people around me, do you mean three, or do you mean five? I mean three, sorry. I was saying four because I, I saw four other screens besides yours in our Discord chat, and I forget that I'm not playing. Next quick question, and this is, like, it's going to be twofold depending on the answer. Where are Lucy and Salvador? You don't know. And that, and then metagame, sh- well, I guess that's a goal now. we got to find them again. <laughs> they were unconscious when you left them. And we didn't see the people who took us take them yeah no you did you wouldn't have okay i guess technically you didn't tell them that there were two unconscious crew members on the ship somewhere so that probably would have been a fun surprise for them but you know but they didn't ask i think also at a certain point there's assumed knowledge that the dm god has so <laughs> vi is in a bad place jyla is doing something i'm gonna try to pull malcolm in okay he hasn't said to do anything yet uh, since you're doing this roll plus weird that will be a an 11. Malcolm, you kind of faint and come to in the cognitive realm where you can see a giant floating lidded eyeball connected to a tendril that goes off into space. What the space? What just happened? Uh, I tried pulling you into the cognitive realm because I can now see other people while I'm in here in a more physical way. Like before it was just empty space, which I'm sure that's all you see right now. But I can pick out people, and I was seeing if this was a thing I could do, and I think Vi might have shot me had I brought her in here, and Jyla's tapping the barrier, and I I don't know what she's doing, and that didn't want to, like, get her hand cut off or something. Oh, I can't say I understand all this weird space magic mumbo-jumbo still, but I guess it's good that you can pull in allies here now, I suppose. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to look around. Do I see the other figures or do I just... No, see I shook my head. I'm on a podcast and I shook my head. No, you cannot see the other figures. Just You can just see the eyeball. Not only are you on a podcast, Cody, you've been on a podcast for like five years now. <laughs> I know, and I shook my head like an idiot. Well, I'm guessing that eyeball looking thing over there is that, what you call it, a watcher? Yup. I I believe that will be one of my goals to get rid of. I know Vi is trying to get a communicator to let Camilla know, and I'm going to go kill that thing. And that 
that tendril that just goes off into nowhere? Do you think that's going back to chaos itself, or what do you think? I would guess that that's where it goes. I think Watcher is a quite literal term. I don't know. I think things look bad right now, but I think chaos is more afraid than they want us to know. Well, I just thought of something that could be a benefit to us. Is it the power of love? Well, that, yeah, obviously. <laughs> Why didn't we think of this sooner? <laughs> I, I don't know what kind of surveillance they have in that cell. I think I saw um, Jyla poking around at some stuff. I'm sure she's found something. But they can't surveil us in here, can they? Unless that eyeball gets right on top of us. So we could probably talk and plan things in here without them having any idea. Uh, the one problem is we do pass out out there, so... I may look like I'm meditating, but you're probably in a, a, a pile on the floor. Well, I'll just make sure I'm, like, laying down when we go to have our meetings, and it just looks like I'm taking a nap. I mean, that could work, but I'm also not too worried about that eyeball, because I think it might... I, I think that, though the commander here seems like a prick, I don't think that they are fully on the side of chaos... I think that f things can be changed for the better. Yeah, she seems she seems pretty morally gray, which is almost like if you're if you have a goal and that goal's evil, like yeah, that's not good, but at least at least you have a stance. Hers just seems to be like going with whatever she's told, which even in the Galactic Alliance, like if you had a good reason for not following orders, that was usually commended. I mean, you got to remember though that being a keeper was kind of like topping out on your career and not in the good way. You know, you were you there wasn't like a lot of hierarchy where you could get promoted and then this came along and she all of a sudden got a pay pay increase and more responsibilities and now flies a planet sized ship. I mean, it's been good for her for now. But I don't think she likes the lack of autonomy that the watcher provides. Yeah, she did seem to hesitate when she was talking with us, when it came close. As I said, I think Chaos is in a tenuous position. I think it thinks it has us beat, but I think it's scared that it doesn't. Because, from what you guys have told me, the Outlaws weren't really doing much these past three months, and Chaos is still hunting us down so hard. Yeah, we've been pretty... We've just been pretty holed up on on that planet and with very little resources. We haven't really been able to do much anything. Right. So I think it speaks volumes that chaos after destroying Homestead still wanted to kill every last one of us. That's not something you do to someone you don't consider a threat and chaos will posture and act like this is all going according to its plan. But there's only so many times I can, it can be defeated and me believe that it's all going according to plan before I start to get suspicious so then what do we do? Well, I think step one is get out of the cell. Step two is stab that... Well, step two is find Lucy and Salvador. And step three is stab the space out of that eyeball. I think we're missing a, missing might be missing some steps in there, because last I checked, none of us have any weapons except your... I assume you still can have a magical space weapon of some sort. In the cognitive realm, you can have any weapon you can imagine. Yeah, but if we have to fight anybody out in the real world, I I can I can punch pretty well, I think, but I don't know if I'm going to be able to get through Interstellar Council guards with particle magnetism weapons. I mean, we only have to take out one guard, and then we have particle magnetism weapons. That's a good point. But first, we need to get out of this cell before we need to worry about weapons. We should probably drop out and at least get Jyla and Vika in here if we're going to continue planning, I think. There, I can, I can, can I pop out myself, or do you have to send me back? I don't really know how any of this works. I mean, I, I am unsure. I was testing to see if I could pull someone in, and that worked. So I think if you want to try to get yourself out, you're more than welcome to. If you want me to send you out, I can do that as well. I'm going to try to get myself out. <laughs> Roll plus weird. No, no, that's not good. <laughs> I rolled a one. <laughs> On 2d6, I rolled a 1, because it was a 2 minus 1. Okay. Um, <laughs> that's that's very appropriate for this roll, because I can't... I don't, I'm not going to weird. You have no idea how to get out of the cognitive realm at all. You have n zero ability to do that. 
Yeah. He squeezed your eyes shut really hard. Yeah, I imagine he was like going like, uh, like squeezing like one eye, like trying, like thinking really hard about leaving. Am I still here? I'm still here. How, how about now? Yes, you are, Captain. <sighs> yeah, I have no idea how to get out of here. Uh, can I send him back? Yeah, you can. <laughs> do I need to roll for that or do I send him back? No, you do not. <laughs> I just put my hand on his shoulder, and then he, like, wakes up in a heap on the floor. <laughs> yep. Did Jyla or Vi notice me collapsing? Nope. <laughs> <laughs> when I said Vi was in her own world, I meant it. She she is, like, fully in planning mode. Um, I think Jyla notices when you come to... Sully, just for the record, like, Sully's, like, sitting with his back against the wall, like, legs folded, like, looks like he's just meditating. Yeah. Like, it looks very, like, if you looked at him, you could see that he's passed out, but if you're just, like, casually watching, like, the camera, like, the cell camera, he just looks like he's in a deep meditative thing, you know? Like, nothing looks weird. Yeah. Uh, do you have a nice nap, Cap? Uh, yeah, it was, it was all right. Uh, here, I, I need you guys both to come here real quick. Huh? I'm sorry. What do you need? Uh, I, I just come over here. Just, just come over here real quick. Let's let's sit against this wall. <sighs> okay. We do that. Yeah. I realize now we probably should have set up a signal. Can Sully? Does Sully have any idea when, like, when his his physical form is being disturbed at all when he's in the cognitive realm? Well, he can see us, right? Yeah, I can see you guys now. Yeah. So I think when we all get close to you, pull us in. Yeah, because I sit like I sit down right next to Sully, and I have them sit next to me. I pull them in. Uh, okay, all of you are pulled into the cognitive realm. Sorry about that. I didn't want to like say out loud what we were doing in case they're listening. What the space is that thing? I think it's the Watcher. Cool, creepy, right? Uh, well, um, if anybody else, if anybody. Else has ideas on how to get out. Same now. I'll give my plan a whirl. See what you guys think. Well, I saw you poking around the shields and looking looking around stuff. What did you find? Well, uh, they're definitely watching us from a camera in the ceiling. Uh, they have the purple shield that we all saw. There's a patrol that comes by about every ten minutes. So my idea would be we see somebody walk by. We panic, call him in. Uh, maybe Sully could be not breathing or look, looking, you know, comatose. He has a lot of practice doing that. I mean, um, it is trivial for me to drop into the cognitive realm and pass out. Right. Call him over, attack him three on one, try to get a particle magnetism weapon, get whatever uh, key or pass card they have that would let him in, break ourselves out of here. All right. It's better than anything I've thought of. My goals are, after we get out of here, we should find Lucy and Salvador. Also, I think we need to kill that eye. Is that something you have to do in here, or...? The physical and cognitive realms are not wholly separate, but I think I will be able to work better in here. All right. Um, are... Y would you be able to find Salvador, Salvador, and the Salvador or Salvador, Salvador? Would you have? Would you be able to find Salvador and Lucy uh, in the cognitive realm, like Sansom? Um, I could try. Can I see if I can reach out and like identify people? Um, so that would be a, I can try. It's a roll. Yeah, that, that, that's what I said. Like I figured. Yeah. The answer might be no. Depends on how you do. Well. Either I, either I do or it's not possible because I got a 14. <laughs> hey! Yes, you do. Yes, they are. And I tell them where, like, where the general they? sense of where they are. Yeah, yeah. Are they, like, they're not in a place next to us then? Um, They would be in a, like, a med bay, which is kind of far, but not impossibly far. You know, it's it's a trek across the ship to get there. I I, did, I forgot to mention this to you, Captain, but the the bad news is, is the only chaos taint on this ship looks to be that eye. Why is that bad news exactly? That means the rest of the ship is acting under their own accord. Right. None of these people are hostages of chaos, per se. 
I can't just free them from chaos and we'll have another person on our side. Right, but I think on the flip side, it means that if they if they think they get orders to do something else, they will do that, right? I mean, yes, but we need to... I, I doubt I still have Interstellar Council clearance codes. I figure they purge those since I'm apparently on a wanted poster. Well, that, maybe that's something you could hack into? Once we get back onto a ship, maybe, uh, this year vessel could get a little phone call telling him priorities have changed, perhaps. I could definitely give it a shot. Um, but whatever we do, we need to do it fast because I'm really worried that they've got the map and I need to let Camilla know as fast as I can, as fast as we can. Otherwise, we might be the only outlaws left. Right. We need to let everybody know to bug out as soon as possible. Exactly. So I think right now the best plan of getting out of here is yours, Jyla. All right. Any, uh, assuming we can break out of here, we go get Lucy and Salvador. Um, instead of us 3v1ing this, these people that come in, why don't I just pull them into the cognitive realm as soon as they get close? Oh, I mean, sh- sure. If you, if you think you could do that. I didn't know if you could only do that with friends that you knew. I didn't know if it's like a soul connection thing. I don't really understand how this place works. <laughs> can you leave them here? How does that work? So they can probably get out of here, but that they will pass out for a brief amount of time. And that might be enough time to grab a particle weapon off of their body. I would say so, yeah. And, you know, if you have the particle weapon... They can't stop us from leaving as easily. Well, and at least shut the door behind them. The The other worry, though, of this whole plan, though, is how do we take care of that camera? Because if we knock out guards with that camera on, they're going to know immediately what's going on. I can try to hack it, see if we can turn it off by uh, flipping some wires. Can you get a feedback loop going where it just looks like we're all napping against the wall or whatever, where it just looks like that indefinitely, even when we're gone. I could try. All right, we do that first. Get a guard's attention, pull them into the cognitive realm, get their stuff, escape, find Lucy and Salvador, head back to uh, the honor. I'm hoping that these guards will have some sort of uh, communicator device that would have a layout of the place. Or something that I can use to uh, basically hotwire and get a message back to Camilla. That too, yeah. And then um, fly on out of here. Is that is that our plan? I think that's the best one we got. Yeah, it sounds like a plan to me. Well, I'm also taking a stop to kill that thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, right. We, we do need to do that. Uh, should we do that before we get to Salvador and uh, Lucy? Maybe whichever one we uh, find first. Mm, my concern about getting Salvador and Lucy sooner rather than later is that they will be unconscious. Well, if we know where they are, because you found them with your space sense, uh, can we just Spagic, transport please. them? No, I won't. Uh, I love you, but I won't. Can we just transport them back to the ship once we're on the ship? Cody? Yeah, uh, I don't, I did not expect you to answer that question, so I'm gonna say the answer to that question is yes. You mean ask that question? Yeah, I, yeah, I guess I was not prepared for that question. So it feels mean to say no arbitrarily. So I'm going to say yes arbitrarily. <laughs> you did a roll of 14, so he knows the location really you well. Can just, you can just shuffle their corpses around like copying files off the internet, <laughs> sure. I mean, you did give us a teleporter room, or let us buy a teleporter room. I did, I did, and I did not think about it hard enough, but, you know, that's okay. Right, well, so we could just get back to the, find the watcher, get back to the honor, transport them over, get the heck out of here. Sounds like a plan. I think this begins with Vika hacking a panel and us being in front of her so that she can do it without being spotted. All right, sounds good. Okay, so how do we get out of this? Um, how do we get out of this place? Well, you can try doing it on your own, or I can send you back. So if you want to do it on your own, imagine being a pebble in the stream. Except the stream is actually a mountain, and the pebble is a tree. That is made of Sully, fire. I got way too much on my mind to do that. Can you just let me <laughs> out, please? <laughs> I drop everyone out. 
All right, you drop everybody out. Malcolm is thinking of fiery trees on mountains with pebbles in them. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess uh, I'm up first, so uh, Vi's going to climb up to the camera? Uh, Question? Make me an act under pressure roll, I believe. Is it in the cell with us? Yes. Oh, so she can like go underneath it and like shimmy up without being seen. Yeah, that well, was it'll depend my on how well she rolls. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, but like, there, there's a possibility for her to do that. Can I? Can we like do anything to help? Yeah, I was, I was gonna ask that if there's anything I can do to assist. Well, that's not. You have to tell me what you're doing, and then you roll help a friend. You know, I, I want to, I want to go to like the far end, like the far corner. Basically the opposite direction of where Vi is doing stuff and just sit in that corner to try to maybe draw its attention over towards me. Oh, yeah, that's a good idea. Oh, if it's like swiveling. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I like that idea. Can I use my harmony magic to like just like make us all work in tandem like the three of us that are being distracting? So the problem is being more harmonious would actually make you less distracting. (laughs) It's more like... (laughs) Okay, that's fair. You envision harmony, and then you punch Malcolm in the face to try to create a better <laughs> distraction. <laughs> it was more just like, like we are doing exactly what Vi needs as she needs it, you know. But I, I understand. I understand what you're saying. I think Malcolm's idea was a good one. <laughs> I feel like we're gonna go with Malcolm's, and that feels like I like it. The problem is it feels universally applicable in every situation. So we're going to have Malcolm roll to assist a friend. We'll be harmonious later. Yeah, this this feels like basket weaving. You know what I mean? It's like, what <laughs> can't it do? Universally applicable. Yeah. Hey, I let you use calm authority and fast friends so many times, Cody. <laughs> okay, which, which stat do you think? This would be charm. I would say charm. You're trying to do something social. Yeah, it's bad. That's a four. Okay. Um. No, this is not helpful. In fact, it makes things worse. All right. No. Our plan is going terribly already. Is that a minus one on me then? Or? No, not exactly. It, it'll become apparent what it is. Okay, okay. Go ahead and roll. Here's so I already rolled, but here's my question: Is this for? what I'm doing to the camera, or is this for just trying to be, like, sneaky sneaky? This is just kind of everything. Okay. Um, Can I argue, because you said it was under pressure, uh huh. but I have my faction unique ability is I have a tool um, for everything, and uh, I never take fi- uh, penalties when fixing items under duress. Ooh, that never taking... All penalties. I get, well, or it's a plus one when fixing and never take penalties while fixing items under duress. We don't really have like a specific mechanic I'm gonna say for that. I think what that means is you could use smarts if you want. Okay. Instead of cool. Does that benefit you? Um, a little bit. Okay. What, what did it end up being? Do I get to use that plus one? Mm, you're not fixing something. Okay. Um, well, what, what's the what's the number? Like, are you at a six? I'm at a nine. <laughs> oh. Okay. <laughs> if I get that plus one, it's a ten. If not, it's a nine. And also, we do get one camaraderie for a later roll because I tried. <laughs> yeah, and that triggers. Uh, okay. Yes, it can be a ten. I have in my head how this shakes out because one hard move was generated by Malcolm messing up, basically. Mm-hmm. Um, so the camera initially follows Malcolm. You jump up to the panel and, like, kind of grab on and manage to pop it loose and start fiddling with the wires to try to, like, quickly make it so... Do you want to turn it off or do you want to create a loop? I want to create a loop. Okay, so there's, like, a brief hiccup where the camera tries to swing down to you because it, like, you can tell that, like, whatever automatic stuff is there that makes it track movement, it realizes that... Malcolm's just kind of holding still in a corner and starts trying to find something else. And then that's when it starts looping. So that has created like kind of a repetitive bob in the camera. So instead of just staring at Malcolm and being looped, it's like bobbing back and forth, which might be a little bit more noticeable. And okay. So that's, that's what happened there. Okay. Uh, I pop down. Um, uh, I think it's hard to tell without looking at uh, a screen, 
but I'm pretty sure I got that looped as uh, as well as that's going to be. All right, time to hail a cab. Uh, Jyla goes over to the to the window uh, to get the attention of the nearest guard. So you're just gonna Sully sell- look dead. Sully goes into like a weird position, like uh, like in a heap on the floor, and then drops into the cognitive realm. Okay, so you start screaming. Sully's in the cognitive realm, and this kind of takes a minute, like longer than you think it should. Okay. Um, and then in front of the door, um, you see, gotta keep these names where I can't see them. You see Captain Ivana just kind of walk in front of the door and just kind of tiredly goes, I know what you're doing. Do we have to do this? I mean, I expected some kind of escape attempt and she like pulls out a weapon and uh, opens the shield and goes, all right, back up against the wall. And she walks into the cell. And when she like when I when she gets close to where my body was, I, dr- I pull her into the cognitive realm. As soon as she drops into the cognitive realm with use. OK, so to the three of you, she falls in a heap unconscious. Let's start with this. What do the three of you do? Was she alone? She was alone. I go to grab her weapon. OK, you grab her weapon. I think Vi is getting her communicator. Yeah. Okay, you're getting your communicator? I'm, I'm going for whatever communication devices she has. And Jyla is looking for any sort of, like, badge or passcode or something that will unlock things. Basically, we strip her down to nothing like <laughs> we are. <laughs> that That is fine. Jyla, make an investigation check. The, um, Malcolm and Vika, you are both successful, but Jyla, make an investigation check. That's an eight. It's her thumb. They use thumbs for everything. <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't find any badges or anything on her, but you find a folded up piece of paper. Uh, and we are going to jump back to the cognitive realm. As soon as Eva- Captain Ivana drops into the cognitive realm with you, she kind of hesitates for a minute and she looks around. She's still holding her hand up as if she's carrying a gun. And when she realizes she she's not, she drops her hand, sees the eye, just kind of nods and turns around and looks at you, Sully, and goes, Well, I got to admit, I didn't expect this, but I'm not disappointed in the outlaws. So, I have a question for you. Are you, were you just a keeper in name and one of, like, the thugs? Or do you actually, like, believe in any of, like, our religious teachings or not? Well, that's a good question. I believe in what the Keepers did. I believe in what the Keepers should still be doing. That is true. And I don't necessarily think that what Camilla and you did was the right thing. She basically should have immediately arrested you and she should have never had any communication with Grizzle. But here we are and, you know, this is where we stand. Now, I have a question for you. We're someplace else, huh? Yup. Okay, I'm getting that. Is What's that giant eye thing over there? Uh, that would be your boss. Ah, she kind of looks at it and just kind of goes, Do you know, can it hear us here? Uh, it's, it does, is it looking at us or is it just... It's not. My... I do not believe it can, because otherwise you probably would have known this was going to happen. Well, okay, that's fair. Good a time as any. So, let me explain something here. This is... So, um, normally it can. Is there, like, any way that I can be, like... I don't know. I I guess I can't hear us. Never mind. What what are you getting at? I was going to see if, like, I could do some, like, interference with it. Like, that would, like... You know, like, it can't see harmony or something, but... That will just probably draw more attention Ooh. to us. I was going to say, you can try that, but if it fails, what it will do is immediately draw attention to you. <laughs> right. That, I, I figure at this point she would have known with what we were trying to break out because like, we planned it for a while in this space and it didn't do any anything. So I'm going to just leave the status quo and hope for the best. Well, I'm going to assume, as that watcher didn't tell me that you had a plan to capture me, 
that it's not playing that level of 4D chess where it tried to get me to come in here, get captured and drug into the cognitive realm so I would show my hand. So, okay, normally anything that is said on the ship, it can hear and it can see most things. So keep that in mind. And my next question is, can you kill that thing for me? What's in it for us? Oh, what's in it for you? Great question. I don't like you, and I don't like Camilla, and I'm aware she works with you, but I sure do like that thing less. But the problem is, real difficult to discuss that with anybody on board the ship with it, as it can hear and see basically anything that passes into our computer system. So what I want you to do is kill it, and then I can blame it on all of you, and then I'll have a ship without surveillance to chaos for a while until I'm back on Avis. Now, I feel like that could be a mutually beneficial thing. I think that would work. We, I do need one other, th- two other things. Sure. Don't, well, I, I don't know if you guys are doing this, but I'm assuming you're not letting chaos just eat people. And turn them into the goop monsters. Oh, okay. So that's a tricky thing, right? Turns out, okay, so Avis was kind of okay with having a a cultural shift in its mannerisms. Apparently a lot of people were bored with what the council had become and were anxious for some excitement and intrigue. But getting turned into goop monsters was... A visual issue that was difficult to explain. So what they came up with are those kind of indestructible robots that I now have living on my ship. They are everywhere. I have one, and as I have seen, they are difficult to kill. Sorry, let me not mislead you. Them things is difficult to kill, but... Oh, don't worry. I will take care of them. I sure hope so, and I sure hope they can't hear anything, because here's the deal... Like, if I have to choose between working with that thing and getting killed, I'm going to work with that thing. But if that thing doesn't exist, now I see an opportunity, and all of a sudden we can talk. So how about this as what's in it for you? I have your plans on my ship. Not your plans. Your coordinates to your home system on board my ship right now. That's the thing. I'm going to, I'm going to make every effort to transport them back. And I cannot do anything to help that not happen so long as that robot is alive. Now, if it's not, then we can talk. But until that happens, I have to do my job in the most upstanding way possible. That seems fair. Doesn't it seem fair? I think so. I feel like we can come to terms with that. So, I know you can't help me in any unsounding way, but being pulled in here, you're passed out in a heap on the floor? Great. I don't know if you have a way of informing your friends, but they should take my gun and make it look like you attacked me. It might not even be a bad idea to kind of hit me in the face with something heavy, maybe even shoot me with a taser of some sort. Whatever you can do to make it look like I put up a really strong fight and then you didn't kill me. That's my ideal. Not dead, not seriously maimed, but just like maimed in a way that makes me look rakish and dangerous. I am sure that they are kicking you right now. (laughs) Great. That's exactly what I wanted to hear. Back in the real world, Malcolm is kicking her. (laughs) (laughs) Definitely not what's happening. (laughs) Um, So we are going to get rid of that thing for you. And, you know, I, I understand you don't care for me or Camilla. I understand that we all had different views on how to best help the galaxy and more specifically the interstellar council but i think we can both agree that what currently is the interstellar council is not what either of us want any of us want yeah we can kind of agree on that sure and our goal is to get the factions back to better than they were she just kind of doesn't say anything to that yeah i agree i don't want chaos running the interstellar council how about that That's fine. Anyway, take your time figuring out how to get out of here. We'll be gone by the time you wake up. And I just blink out. (laughs) (laughs) She goes, oh, it won't be a problem. Uh, All right. So you blink out. She is still unconscious on the floor. 
Uh, I I go grab the gun. Who has the gun? Mal does. Mal. I grab the gun. Hey, uh, Captain, can I see that real quick? Uh, sure. He hands it to him. And then I just, like, shoot her three times with the taste, like the stun setting. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect. Well, that was aggressive. Okay. Uh, we had a nice chat in there. She asked to be tased, so if we fail, she doesn't get killed. And I thought that was a fair request. Now, we need to kill that eye, and they s- and she said that she would be willing to accidentally lose the plans. However, that eye thing can see everything on the ship, or almost everything on the ship, and can hear everything on the ship. So, let's get moving. Wait, including including all of everything you're saying right now? So I think you might have just screwed her over. You looped the camera in this room. Including the audio? Yeah, I would I would assume so, yes. Okay, I guess I guess my in my brain I assumed it was hearing in a different sense than using the camera. I, I would have assumed She said something about about it being like technically linked, not like spiritually linked. <gasps> Sorry, okay, so let me let me let me just for DM clarity here on what happened, you guys went, okay, we want to remove the surveillance in the room. You rolled successful on that. I'm not going to middle finger you that hard. So you, yeah, when you mess, when you looped the camera, I would have assumed it would have looped the audio as well. And then pulling the curtain back more, the reason Ivana showed up is because she noticed that you looped the camera and she saw that as an opportunity to meet here and talk to you guys. Which is why she showed up the way that she did. Gotcha. So I guess in, in my head, what I was thinking was, by looping the camera, we prevented surveillance from normal people, but then the eye played by different rules. It's kind of the where I went. I can see everything that the ship can see, which okay. means chaos knows anything that the ship knows. Right. By technical means. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's why it's like robot while we were waiting for Sully to get out of the cognitive realm, would I have had enough time to tweak the uh, the communication thing, that device that she had? Oh, that's a really good question. Because I would have done that immediately if we were waiting. Um, <laughs> make me a investigation check. What am I adding to that? Uh, investigation, I believe, is sharp. If I'm not mistaken, or smarts, whichever. Okay, 12. My... Nice. Okay. Nice, nice, nice. So this is this is a short-range communication device, but not a long-range one, and you're on board a ship. there. But you did learn the location of... It's basically like it has a map, like a layout of the ship. So you know where a communication array is that you could get to and send a warning if you would like. Okay. And then I found a piece of paper. What does my piece of paper say? You did find a piece of paper. Uh, you open the piece of paper and it just says, it sees everything, it hears everything. Mmm. Okay, so she was gonna... Okay, I get it. Uh, it looks like we're gonna be fighting pretty quick after we get out of here. Also, from what she told me, Chaos does not have the map yet. They, It is stored in this ship and they are transporting it back. So, we still might want to get out of where we are. But we have options. So it's within this big ship now. It's no longer on the on the one where Salvador and Jyla and uh, Lucy were. Correct. Hmm. Okay. Sorry again. Something I feel like maybe needs specific explanation because, like, saying it's on a computer gets pretty vague. So whatever, like, the main ship computer is on board this massive city-sized ship, right? If anything gets on that, chaos immediately knows it. That includes all surveillance. That being said, the implication here is that Ivana stored the map, like, off of the ship onto some kind of, like, personal air-gapped computer. So she has it, not the ship in general. So at the moment, you do not have reason to think that chaos immediately knows the presence of all the other outlaws. Okay. Okay. Sorry, she kind of said that, but I just didn't want there to be like confusion about what my language meant when sometimes there is. Why why would they need to like transfer it manually? So normally they wouldn't and um Okay, so imagine it this way, like 
Ivana went, okay, I'm going to copy this to a flash drive and then send the information away. And then she copied it onto a flash drive and didn't. And then asked you guys to kill the thing that would notice that as weird and report on it. Does that make sense? Okay. So she's buying time. She's both holding that information hostage, buying time, and kind of taking a risk. Does that make sense? Yes. Like, yeah. the- she is being a little bit suspicious, but not enough that she would be, like, immediately killed by the Watcher. Mm-hmm. Right. So, yes. And also then is has leverage on you guys that she could go, I'll send it anyways. You know, and just, you know. Right. Yeah. Okay. So, you want to take that uh, particle magnetism weapon? Did she have a particle magnetism weapon? She had it on her before, right? So, she had a gun... Specifically, it actually was not a particle magnetism gun oh, okay. that seemed to be almost loudly lacking now that you're asking about it specifically. Okay. Well, I could have sworn she had one of them. Never mind. Uh, Is there a box across the room with all of our gear in it? <laughs> you know, as every video game? Ooh. That's a really good question. Yeah, I was going to ask where our gear is. Hmm. Okay, I would say that there is probably like a um like a guard station, you know, like down the hall there would be like a desk where a person would normally be stationed and um like there'd be crates where people's personal effects would be stored. That is where your stuff would be. And it's not there. Um no, it's it would be down there at the end of the hall, but you know, if you were to imagine like when you were getting brought in, you would have been brought past there. There was like a person there who took all of your stuff. Right, so we'd have to take out a person. Yeah, or try to do something sneaky, but yes. That that the challenge to getting your stuff back is there is a person, a person guarding there. it technically. Okay. I mean, I think our stuff is useful. Yeah. <laughs> all right, let's move out. All right, you head where where are you going? What are your plans? I, we're going to go get our stuff back. And I think Malcolm gets to take points since he's the one with the gun. <laughs> All right. Are you leaving your cell? Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Okay. So you run out of your cell and immediately... We do. Up- I do. I do lock it behind us. Okay. You run out of your cell, lock the door behind you, and immediately sirens go off that say, um... Prisoners escaped. Prisoners escaped. Prisoners escaped. Well, so much for looping that camera. You looped the camera in the cell. I mean, it got the captain down here, so I think we are... I think that was helpful, so... Less talking, more running to get our stuff. (laughs) All right, you start running down the hall, um, and you can hear from, like, the opposite direction, like, footsteps and shouting. You run into, like, this little office... Where, uh, your stuff was initially stored, there's one kind of tired looking guard who stands up and goes, Free! Freeze! Freeze where you are! Prisoners! Freeze! You don't really want to do this, do you? Said freeze! So you have to freeze! I mean, we're not, go- we're not, we're not gonna do that. I will have to detain you! Mal, we know there's a stun setting, just stun him. Yeah, and I stun him. Or I try to stun <laughs> him at least. Alright, roll blast some baddies. What's the stat on this weapon? It would be cool. Is that what we use for ranged weapons? I think Whatever so. your gun stat is, it'd be the same. That is an 11. Uh, okay. Do you want to do extra damage or avoid damage? Uh, I would, I would say extra damage. Just try to knock him out real good. Okay. So he draws a particle magnetism, uh, like stake thrower and kind of half heartedly shoots it at you like intentionally trying to shoot to wound kind of and it grazes your knee as you kind of stumble back and fire twice into his chest on the stun setting and he falls to the ground immobilized uh okay all of your you know your stuff is in crates behind him yay we go we open the chest the screen goes black it comes back in focus we're all on our gear (laughs) (laughs) yeah jell is putting odds and ends in all her pockets because she had a, a lot of odds and ends on her person. Are you like Vinny in um, the a- Atlantis, where you're just like constantly working on a bomb? Oh, yeah, kind of, yeah. You're the equivalent of the person in D&D who's just always pulling, like, weapons out, except it's just, like, wires. Yeah, yeah, instead of knives on the rogue, it's 
You have like Why five hash finish bombs in your pocket. <laughs> yes. Um, and she had a particle magnetism weapon on her. Her own, her axe. Do you take the particle magnetism stake thrower? And uh, I mean, I have a thing. I think somebody else should probably take the stake thrower. For, for everyone's vampire, space vampire killing needs. <laughs> I mean, I'll take another weapon. I'm, I'm, I'll take it. I'll get the stats from you later, Cody. All right. So uh, like that scene in Commando, all of you are strapping on grenades and combat vests and putting on your, uh, you know, black and green camo face paint, all 80s Arnold Schwarzenegger ready to take this ship by storm. And that is where we will end. We hope you enjoyed this latest episode of Outlaws Wanted. Music for this show is from danosongs.com, audionautics.com, zapsplat.com, and in the public domain. If you like this show, you can check out more of our actual play podcasts at the Wandering Gamer Network's website or on Podbean. You can also interact with us on Twitter, Facebook, and Instagram. We also post Let's Play videos under our YouTube channel, the Wandering Gamer Network, and on Twitch, we can be found at wandering underscore gamers. Now remember, it's not the outlaws that make trouble, it's trouble that makes the outlaws. Mm-hmm.